You are listening to the Crow Strong Podcast, a native podcast focused on getting strong physically, mentally, and spiritually, ultimately to help you become the strongest and healthiest version of yourself. What's going on, everyone? Thank you for tuning in to the Crow Strong Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Zinger. Be sure to check out the website, crowstrongpodcast.com. The podcast is available on Spotify, Apple, Google, and pretty much every podcast platform out there. But if you don't have any of those, all of the episodes will be available on the website. If you would like to contact us with any comments, concerns, or have any recommendations for future episodes, you can do that through the website, crowstrongpodcast.com. Also, the Crow Strong Podcast has a YouTube channel up and ready. Check that out for all the latest episodes. I do plan on going live uh, regularly through the YouTube. And also uh, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and now Twitter for all the podcast updates. Today, I am here in the heart of the Crow Reservation, the Valley of the Chiefs, Lodgegrass, Montana. Uh, with me today, I have two very special guests, two individuals that grew up here and are rooted in the town of Algie, leaders, visionaries, world changers. i like to welcome you, uh, Gary Stevenson, a business and technology teacher here at Lodgegrass and is also the head coach for the Lodgegrass High School Girls basketball team. Hey. How's it going, Gary? Thanks for having us. And uh, my second guest is the Gear Up Youth Liaison and is the two-time Montana Coach of the Year and head coach for the back-to-back state champion Lodgegrass Indian Boys basketball team, none other than my good friend Josh Stewart. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. What an impact are you guys trying to make on the the kids and the community overall? Man, that's, that's the biggest one. I think that's why when we said do something so great, I have to look beyond us and say only God could have done that. And it's gone into uh, making sure they appreciate and show gratitude to those who are investing in their lives. And I think that's kind of really the start. So that because these moms and dads, sometimes a single mom, sometimes a single dad is busting their butt, working hard, at a thankless job where the supervisor doesn't know how to be a leader. But they're showing up and doing what they're supposed to do, doing what they're told to do a lot of times. And because in the back of their mind, they're saying, how is my son going to have shoes if I don't show up to work? How is he going to have this and that? How is he going to get the backpack? How is he going to get the shoes and the pants and the all the gear? And how is he going to, you know, look nice? I want my son to look nice. And it, so always go home and thank your parents, I always say. And so we started that practice isn't over. Um, and I feel like that was something that we could do to help the community because if these kids go home and do, they're just good kids at home. They're fixing their beds, doing the dishes, sweeping. It takes a lot of pressure off the moms, the dads. You know, and the other siblings are watching them and they're saying, hey, wow, he's doing it. You know, and I think um, we know that uh, I think we have an understanding that we do influence them beyond the game. Yeah. Um, So being aware of that is keeps keeps me solid and in line. It keeps me researching, studying, reading, making sure I never show up empty. You know, and I always want to have something to give them because I know what comes out of my mouth is important. Because they're going to take that and they're going to run with it. And so we got to be good leaders, you know, and, and uh, leadership is influence. John Maxwell says leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. You know, and um, a lot of people have influence. Everybody has influence. How are they using that influence? Uh, some are they're using the influence to be bad, to be negative. They don't know it, but they're leading someone down a bad road. They're leading, though, and that's leadership. That's influence. Um, with them, we try to show them to be the good influence. Let's get a kid we can just – Bring a, bring a board and say, man, this little guy, he looks up to you. And the boys presented a gift to this little guy, made him our ball boy. He became our mini coach. He was even announced as that. And it was just really amazing. I feel like that's reaching the community, getting these little kids and saying, like, I believe in you. Come follow us. We'll show you the way to, to being a champion, not just on the court, but in life. You know. Yeah. And so I feel like that's one of the big goals and, and making sure we see all these little kids in the community. And it's like, hey, what's up, buddy? I always wave at them. Sometimes they'll be shooting along the side here and I'll pull up and be like, what's your name? Who's your family? Like, what are your goals? And, and I'll think, and in Lodgegrass is basketball is life. You know, yeah. um, basketball has become a pillar of the community. It's, yeah. it's like the horse. We didn't always have the horse, but the late 1600s, early 1700s, yeah. um, we got our first herd. I think, um, the, the revolt, the Pueblo revolt, the Comanches got some, then we think we got horses from them. Mm. And then from there, they became life for us. Yeah. You know, they became something that was vital in our community. I feel like basketball has become that. 
and there's more to, to life than basketball, but basketball has done a lot for a lot of people. It's taken me to 42 states by the time I was 18, made friends all over the world, you know, mm. all over Indian country for sure. I got friends all, everywhere. Right, yeah. uh, and basketball's provided that. It's given me leadership. It's helped me come out of my shell. Um, this introvert that I thought I was, basketball short, pulled a lot of that out of me. I learned to joke and have fun, not take it so seriously, laugh at myself. You know, I learned that with basketball and then leadership skills and hard work. Passing that on is is a great feeling because I know these boys are already doing it. They'll send me uh, messages and like, coach, I just felt led to do this. I don't know what it was, but I just took off the shoes, the shoes off my feet and I gave it to this kid. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I'm not going to post it. It's not a show. I just wanted you to know, coach, that's a great feeling. And he felt the feeling of it's more blessed to give than to receive. He felt it, and he's he's a coach that was amazing. And you know, so I feel like that's part of the giving to the community, building something bigger than basketball. And and they're those kids, these boys, they're going to rebuild this community. They're going to rebuild the by being solid men, by being educated, by being hard workers, and and doing everything they know to do on a high level. You know, um, so so that's I feel like th- there's more to it. Uh, it's carrying your influence and and being aware of who we are, and I think it's not only reaching our community. We have a goal to reach the state. And when I first came in, these three teams—they're no good. They're racist or whatever. I just heard a lot of that. So those three became my targets in prayer. Yeah. Let us build a bridge. Yeah. And they yeah. became family to us. Those coaches there are amazing. We're, uh, we've been with them in tough times. We've been with them, shed tears with them, prayed with them, yeah. uh, and still to this day we'll message, text, call, send. Um, messenger or whatever, and it's like they said we're supposed to be a bad thing, but now here we are, a brotherhood. And the and the the news came and said, "What is this?" And they, we want to cover this, and they shared it, and it went all over. And then Bruce Brown from Proactive Coaching, who's become a mentor and friend of me, is sharing those things, and it's yeah. like turned into thousands. And it's like, <laughs> wow. so we want to reach our community, and it's turned to this, you know. And I feel like um, Gary, not only the girls coach over there, like no, we're going to be one big program. Because that's a brother I love, and I know he's going to do amazing things. He already is doing amazing things. So this is going to be one – like this is all of us. Yeah. When they when they share those things, it's not just the boys. The girls are in there too, you know. And so I think it's it's amazing. And then we'll get uh, – I got countless messages from people from all over. Um, one guy in particular from Dallas is an athletic director. Just caught, caught wind of this stuff and said, hey, what are you doing? How are you doing it? I want to be a part of this. I want to do this in my own community. You know, and I think that's where it's like, wow, it's gone beyond what we can imagine, but we're just beginning. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. The we're like the the little sister. You know what I mean? It's like we're twins. Like the men, the men in a uh, crow culture. You know, they blaze the trail, and the men, you know, they protect, they provide, mm-hmm. blaze the trail, yeah. blaze the trail. You know, and so the women, you know, even though I'm a, I'm a guy coaching the girls, right. you know, we do, you know, a lot of the stuff that coach does. You know, it's awesome because I don't, you know, he's, he's the encyclopedia, you know, full of knowledge. I don't, (laughs) I don't, (laughs) I don't have to go far to find an answer when it comes to to character, to to building a program, basketball. I mean, even though all there, there's a lot of stuff out there, you know, I I ask everybody a million questions. I'll stop and, you know, some coaches, some legendary coaches are like, you know, they might say like one or two things or, you know, you could just tell they're not Nuggets. interested. Oh, yeah. They, they'll still give you a nugget. Though, still, and it's like, like, I'll take that. I'll take I'll take <laughs> that. You don't want to help others, you know, because I've had yeah, I have encountered help. coaches like that. Right. You know, championship coaches. They just they want to hoard. They're yeah. like, man, like, yeah. I don't want you to be like hoard. like take it. If you want yeah. it, take it. Here you so, go. God will just but, give us new stuff. But you know? most but most coaches. That's mentorship at the end of the yeah, day, too. Mo- yeah. Most coaches, though, I've, I've talked to, like, we'll talk for, like, 45, an hour, an hour goes by. Yeah. And I'm just, like, yep. taking mental notes. I'm, like, writing on my phone. I'm, like, what yeah. is this? And just and, notes. And But the thing, too, not just on the basketball court, for me, it's in the education. You know, my impact, because I see these kids not just in practice, but I see them in the halls. Eight hours a day. I in your so class. I in my classroom. Okay, and and it's fun. You know, they come and visit me in class. And they'll just show up out of nowhere and they'll talk to me for like a couple minutes. And I'll send them. I'll send them on their way. Yeah. You know, make sure you get to class though. Don't be late. Do your work. It's Check. fun to witness. Yeah, they come in and just visit me. Um, my the thing I want. I'm actually reading a book right now called Creating Innovators. And I think it's about ten years ten years old. Um, it's it's a great book and it's just reaffirming a lot of ideas i've had 
And one of them is I want to help these young men and women find their pur- I want them to find their purpose in life because basketball, a lot of them with their identity, because of their parents, because of the community's love for basketball, they think that's what they're yeah, no. They think they're it's a tool. Suppo- they think they're supposed to play basketball. And they might not have the best skill, but they're lost because man, everybody does basketball. Yeah. Everybody plays basketball. Basketball's the talk of the town. But I want to help them eventually, you know, hey, if you don't want to play basketball, pursue something that is it's, meaningful. It's okay. Yep. It's okay if you don't want to play basketball. It's okay if you don't want to try out, but they're making you. You know, I've had talks like that with uh with girls. Right. You know, and and, they, and it's a weight off their shoulder. Yeah, yeah. You know, once they once a lot they of times like they never even thought about it. They right. only thought it was basketball. Yeah, they, thought, but... they thought this was the way. Right. Yeah. And there's so many. You know, I, I tell the girls, basketball's our world. It's not our universe. You know, and you know, gods are gods are everything. Yeah. You know, to some, music is their world. Mm. To some, it's dancing, dancing, or it's football, rodeo. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. And I want to help them find their purpose, though. Right. And um, you know, I want to mentor mentor to help them to support them right empower empower them and then they in turn are mentors because they right. are going to be the you know multiply if they don't if they don't come back to lodge grass or to crow but they're out there doing something good for them yep but if they do exactly come, but if they do come back man even oh, even oh, greater it's a great feeling you know and they will many of them will yep and so that's what that's that's what i do that's, that's good. That's how I approach things, and and it start in in the class. You know, when they're in they're in school more than they are in the gym, yep. more than they are on the court, more than they are in the weight room, whatever it is, they're in school yeah. more. And, and can I say this? Just knowing Gary, where the in the unseen place, it's it's passion, it's real. Even with tears, man, this player, you know, or man, the parents. I don't know. I I don't know if they understand, but I just want the very best for their kid just the way they do and it's like yeah yeah and it comes from a real place so so gary hats mm-hmm. off for real like just watching it what he's saying right there is exactly what he's doing and it's when he talks to me about it it isn't it isn't a it isn't a show you know it's like i really do want to impact this this girl's life oh this girl come check her out watch how she works yeah. watch what she does watch when she listens it's like then i'll sit there and watch and i'm like man this guy you know so yeah there, hats off hats off bro thank hats, you man thank yeah you, you can really feel that uh that's really connecting with people more than just teaching them a game, you know, yelling at them on a court, you know, like anybody could do that. Anybody could right. draw up a practice and just run the practice, you know, right. but yeah, it's about connecting, you know, yep. even as a teacher, you have to connect with your, your students. You know, I remember going to Hardin and thinking I was really good at math. Like I thought like, okay, I love math. But when I went there, I was just another kid showing up, transfer from lodge grass but i ended up failing math right i was ineligible and i couldn't believe it because i felt like i was doing good i felt like but the teacher had zero connection with them Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like they didn't want to connect with me at all there's no relationship just just teaching kind of teaching a scripted you know yeah robot that's what i was talking about earlier was that's why i'm glad i ended up here because i get to do things with you know create create Connect. within the the state standards of you know, so. I think um, I've been fortunate to have that in, in Kevin Morales and, and Jared Willems I gotta shout out Jared because he's come and helped a lot and getting on a phone with him it's been amazing and having conversations just as a brother too he'll call and say hey I got this guy over here what do you think and you know we're gonna do this on the south side because he's the pastor now at Hope Center and he, that's something he never thought he'd do. We had conversations going into the state tournament, the state championship game against Bozeman. We were yeah. we were at Bozeman. Yeah. We got up early in the morning about 6.30. He's like, let's go get some coffee. So we walked to City Brew. And I always bring up this conversation to him just because I see him now. And I'm like, wow, he's he's walking in it. <laughs> and he was like, you know what? I don't know. I feel called. I don't know where. It might be missions. I'm not sure. And I was like, man, let, let's pray. And, and I said, same thing. I said, I know I've been called. You know, I mean – God came out and just grabbed a hold of me and I wanted to take the basketball route too. And I thought that was the only way, like Gary was saying, it's true. Like I thought that's the only way through was through the doors of the gymnasium. That's my route. That's how I'm going to get out of here. And then I gave my life to Christ and then went to Tongue River High School and had to readapt, readjust because I was not prepared. Uh, the school was hard, you know, and I was like, but I adapted. I eventually got it back up there and Christ came into my life, changed everything. And then, you know, met my pastor in a gas station, ended up um, just 
full ride, everything to Columbus, Ohio, going to Valley Christian College, playing the men's basketball program. And then like, wow, that, that really took it to a different place for me, you know, and then, um, and coming back and get to, to pour that out, you know, that's like, wow, that's never, never thought it would get to that place. But along the way, these mentors came in, you know, and so, uh, getting into that coaching level, it was Kevin, it was, and Gary too, like back and forth with him, the questions he asked to keep, I always think of iron sharpens iron. Yeah, it's I, like, yeah. cause it's like, Oh, you know what? I'm not sure. Like, Hey, that's a great question. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's talk through that. Or there's other times where like, Oh, I just studied that. So here, here's what I yeah. think. And he'd be like, Oh, great. Okay. Cause I think this and I'm like, dang, I love that. It's a different angle. Let's, let's go, you know, <laughs> so, but there's, there's been other mentors out there. Um, obviously Byron, you higher, know, Carson higher two, three zone. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. <laughs> go ahead. Tell that story. Real quick. Oh, so after, after the first game of the season last year, Cole Strip. You know, I, I got to watch him play in the vision, the image on NFHS. It wasn't very crisp. You know, it yeah, lagged. It like, There's a lot yeah, of lag. Yeah, yeah. And so I watched them play though, and they yeah. they did very well, of course. And we got we got slaughtered over there in Cold Strip. <laughs> 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 but uh, he asked me, "What do you think, bro? You know, any adjustments?" And always know, huh? when, after when every he, game. When he asks me, it's like, "What? What can I'm, I should be asking? You know, I want to know what he sees. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you know, I, I'm really I try to be really thorough." Yeah, truly. Really detailed. I asked some silly questions that might just, if I told him his 2 3 zone, you know, his boys need to step up higher. <laughs> Shift up higher. A little higher. Just, like got, Syracuse. It, like it, Syracuse. It was, it, was, it, was, it was funny, though. Higher 2 3. And it's so all we joke about that. You yeah. know, he wins his state. When he goes back to back, tell him about the higher 2 3. We brought that. To, we raised it. <laughs> we trapped short corner, corner. Yeah. We, like, man, thanks, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like don't but, forget to mention. But, but that. I, I know what he's looking for. He's looking for the. He's looking for player placement. You know, rotating yeah. a player. Man, that player might be better here because they're quicker or they're lengthier. You right. know, but but sure, that was an honest answer because their length is yeah. un- is unbelievable. Six seven, six eight, six five, yeah. six five. Like college team. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. of course, you know, super athletic. That was one of the things I wanted to talk about was implementing like a system. What What are some things that you guys implemented in uh, this? overall basketball system and how do you see that continuing on long term yeah you know i think you i think it starts not only with your vision and your your mission you have to have coaches behind you right you have to have support and a support buy in buy buy in from above you know your admin and then now your buy in from now your uh your parents above and below yeah and then on into your coaches yeah and your coach and your coaches developing and you're implementing your system because you you have seniors graduating yeah, right yeah. someone has to fill these roles now from the jv and yeah. from the freshman team they they need to come in and they need to know the terminology they need right. to know what this everyone's is. everyone's got to speak the same language same yeah. language so everything. it comes from the top and you you press it and say it over yeah. and over it's in our playbook it's in like here uh program mission be the we and that comes from phil jackson you know, and so in there it says to develop Lodgegrass Boys Basketball into a program that models a relentless pursuit of excellence and success while creating an everlasting bond that takes a me attitude and becomes the we. And and Kevin presses that too at Skyview. Mm-hmm. And we want to press that here boys and girls program, you know, and then our our, um, our vision is to all obviously build leaders who know how to build leaders. You're only as good as your assistant coaches. You look at these uh, big NBA, NFL programs, and you see these uh, teams win, become really good, dominant teams, and then the assistant coaches just get head coaching positions right. everywhere. Yeah, right. They become you know those leaders and everything else. You know, when I was in high school, there was a different head coach every single year. Right, the freshman year is another head coach, and then I sophomore. Like, yeah. You know, it's it's hard to really establish anything yeah. if you only get there one season and then bam, you're gone. Right. But now you guys have to. So it seems like you kind of have to rush it, but now you guys got a good two years in, and so how do you how sustain do you, it? Yeah, yeah, how do you sustain this system to where now you have kids coming in from junior high and they already know what you're talking about? Yeah, you know, or coming right. in from freshman and JV, and then they become in varsity and they already know what the defense is. You know, right. different uh, adjustments and yeah, yeah, you can't you can't relent to what you what you your values, uh, your character, you know, your your mission, your vision. Um, you know, last year, uh, you know, when we, we went man to man, you know, and that was a, that was a really tough, I think, uh, adjustment for a lot of players, you know, and even the, the certain, certain fans in the stands, yeah. but that's where it all starts. And so to see where we were last year with man to man, like we would be in the middle of a game and you could just see it like man to man, like what, 
or, you know, trust the process, stay the course. Yeah. And then now into the summer, we went 90%, 95% man-to-man defense. You know, that was the vision. And it could have been so easy to relent. Like, we're not seeing the success we want. We can go 2-3 the whole game. We know it. We might as well do that. We're not winning any games. But now to go 20-8 and eight or whatever we went this summer, and a 90% man-to-man. And the rest, 1-3-1. One, one, and I think we played 2-3 zone like twice. Yeah. Two or three times. couple possessions. Yeah. It, you know, and so it's, st- it's staying the course. Um, and the players, they'll eventually buy in, you know, if they haven't already. It, and it's just, it's trust. It's building. It's connection. It's all, it's all the things we hit on up to this point. Yeah. Yeah. You know, continuing to grow. Yeah. Do you guys see the the kids like really buying into things? A lot of players that I've seen in the past, man, they're playing and they don't even say a single word out there. They're not communicating. They're not telling you. Absolutely. Know? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They're, they're going to sit the bench if they're not. Yeah. And, and okay. they're all, like, hey, I'll give you one more chance. I don't hear you. Uh, you're about to get subbed. You're doing great otherwise, but I, this is what we need to build. And it's not being a, a zero tolerance person and saying, he's not talking, go get him right now. You yeah. know, and it's, it's connecting because you don't want to lose these kids. You got to connect and you, there's a way you got to talk to them and it's not commanding. Yeah. And that's every class that's in this day and age. You can't do the command and instill fear to gain respect. It, it just doesn't work. You yeah. Know? Uh, you, you can't do that. Um, some people do. There are exceptions usually, but that's not our style here. We want to connect and build relationship because um, we want them to build the system right and we want them to communicate. We want them to move at the same time. We want to move with their feet, you know, and make sure they're getting to the to the position first. And um, But they got to be talking loud. And by the time we get to – I said we want to be the loudest ones. I want you guys to be louder than the crowd Be and the bench too. Yeah. I'll go down the yeah. line and I'll communicate with players along the bench and just sit next to them. That way they're all engaged, you know. What do you think? What should we do? Oh, coach, man, you know what we should yeah. do? And then they'll give it at feedback right away. Right, yeah. And it's like, yes, I hate it. Um, that's awesome. Or I'll look at him and be like, coach, I can take that guy. Just let me know I'm ready. They don't say, I'll go get him. He's not doing his job. They'll say, coach, I can, I can do it. Like, just give me a few minutes, coach. And then they'll go. And then next thing you know, they're playing the whole time. Yeah. Davian White. My goodness. Uh, you saw the first game of state tournament. Like, he just worked his tail off every practice. And didn't always get the minutes, but when he got in, he did something all yeah, the time. Once, once, once you have, once you have that tenth, eleventh, twelfth man who is working, Buying who in. knows, who knows that they're not going to get the playing time that they want, but they're still working and showing up because they're when, a part of it. That's yeah. when you know you're doing something special. Yeah, yeah. you know, um, so many, so many players could, and if they have, they've, they quit. There are yeah. players that have quit because yep. they didn't get the minutes that they wanted, yeah. and, or whatever, but. But when when we turned that corner this summer, it was when girls coming from Harden for these two days, yeah, and staying and working out, and they're there, and they when it comes game time, guess what? They're not getting thirty two minutes a game. You know, some but games they're doing their role. Some they're games in. they're yeah. not even seeing the court. Yeah, but they're showing up still. They don't quit. That's when you know because it's almost like a you know they're pushing everything up. They're yeah. helping us level yeah. up because you know, and to me that's just. That's something right for the lady Indians. We have a uh, defensive commitment. What, what's our first defensive commitment communication? Yeah. And there's times uh, what's our second uh, high active hands touch the lights. Our third one, it's rebound. So when we aren't doing those things, okay. When we, when things aren't going our way, okay. Maybe we're down. We find ourselves down or, okay. We, we look at those things. Are we talking girls? No, we're not. Are we all ask them? What do we need to do? Man, we're not talking. You know, our hand, we're reaching too much, our hands, we're not rebounding. So we look at those first. And once though, when those are on, when we're on, in line with those and we're executing those, we're, we're pretty tough. Special. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah we're, we're doing something great. But when, when we're not taught, we might not be reaching, we might have high hands moving, we might be rebounding, but we're not talking. We're struggling. Yeah. And any, any, any one of those is missing. We're not, we're not performing at peak, you know. And so, and to see that, to see that happening, coming into fruition, yeah, it, it's it's wonderful to see. It makes me happy. Yeah, and, and um, regarding just like the system stuff, I think um, making sure I just press it, say it. <laughs> Defense wins games. Repetitive rebounds win championships. Defense wins games. Rebounds wins championships. Over and over. And then it's shown in the practice plan. Every minute we take, we want to make sure every minute we use, we use it 
uh, at a high level yeah, every single time efficiency. repetition because every rep for the player player is a rep for me as a coach you know and so yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes I'll even have my managers can you record this I want to see how I run this drill and I want to see how the players respond how they do it and I'll watch it and be like they'll airdrop it to me or it'll be in my phone I'll just give them my phone and then I'll look at it and be like I could have did this I should have did that and, and yeah. improve that way watch film yeah and then I'll talk to the players and then I'll and I'll just tell them about just going out and being this in the community. Then I'll see those little kids and I'll say, hey, you want to be a champion? You want to be a lodgegrass Indian? Like, yes, coach. And that's the coolest part is they'll acknowledge me as coach. And these little kids, I don't know their yeah. names, but they'll be like, hey, coach, you know, like watch this. And they'll show me their little jumpers. Yeah. Like, man, you're going to be a champ someday. Keep working hard. Um, do things right. All right, go listen to your mom. Mm-hmm. And the, we didn't have the coaches last year. We started. Cotton Realbird was here. He was all in with the junior oh, high. Right, the junior high. And he had the system down. He, he took my playbook and said, okay, how do you do this? And he's like, oh, I get it. You're just doing this, right? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, I know that. I know how to do that. I can teach that system. Yeah. And I'm like, perfect. And then he left. He had to leave. He got a, a job in Wyoming. And uh, and we miss him dearly. Yeah, for real. Cotton, yeah, love Cotton. you, bro. Um, and then we didn't get those years with the junior high, obviously, this last one, um, um, because of COVID and all that, it, with the summer stuff. But with whether it's Trevor and Mandel, whoever – they said we're all into. Yeah, yeah. And Mandel gonna, is awesome, man. He, he's he's like, give me, give me. What, the, are, you, what are you running? So what can help? Yeah. So we can. And help. he was like, um, he came over to Harden at my mom's, and we just sat there, and he's like, man, I'm I'm down. I'm ready to do it. Yeah. I think it was, it was Harden, yeah. Um, but he just said, I'm ready to do this. Like whatever you got, I can teach it. Just show yeah. me the basics, and then I'll run with it. And so it's like, so now we're still in that infant stage of building this program all the way down. We still got to have our basketball camps. We still got to have our leagues yeah. you know and stuff like that that way we can teach that system i'm gonna do what gordon Rilber did and he's a mentor and friend hats off gordon love you um when we were growing up he said no zone there was a big <laughs> sign at the courts yeah. both courts the old court here where all the big dogs were <laughs> and over here yeah we did that in our there was new courts. and it was like gordon Rilber did this years ago and it was amazing um and he said no uh and i was just a kid and it, I'd read those signs. We'd all read those signs. There'd be little diagrams there and stuff on the top. It said, no zone, man to man, um, help side defense, always talking. Those signs were out there. And we did that. <laughs> Guys, remember what the sign says? Remember what coach said? Or sometimes he'd be driving by and like, get out of the two, three. You'd be, hear, you'd be hearing people like, no two, three, guys. We got to play man to man. And so building that again, now that the courts are back open, um, actually, so, oh, I have another one. I have another sheet that I, um, I'm going to put out there for the kids. On a big sign and just tack it to the to the stuff and hopefully they'll respect it and just read it and not vandalize and stuff. But we're going to do that too. And that's been a part of the thing because a lot of – I've gone to a lot of coaches, you know, and just said, what are you doing? How do you do it? You know, and um, they've been great in answering those and even Dry Cozen. He's another good friend. He's awesome. And he said um, – I said, how did you guys build that when you guys won a national championship? And then he gave me some advice and, uh, and of course, Kevin, I watched it firsthand and then – Later on, said, okay, Kevin, I was in there, but what was your mindset? How did you do it? And then he gave me some stuff, and we'd be in his office, which is the best office ever. He, I mean, he has basketball, everything down there. It's we're, we got to do that with the office here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you go in there, and it's just like basketball, everything. And it's just he's like, okay, what about this? Make sure this. Also, I got some stuff, some files I'm going to send you. Check those out. Tell me what works for you or find out what works for you trash whatever it doesn't you know and so it's like awesome so it was more than just x's and o's it was like go to these players go to these families or go to the core get a hold of them and say these things and commit this and and get by you know so it was a lot of that you know all the way down and so that's what we want to want to build that for a little long haul that's what it feels like the the system that you guys are creating on both the girls and yeah. the boys. Like yep. it's it's something that's gonna last for a while. You just it's gotta be keep the lost in. grass Indians as a whole, boys and girls. It's one and done. A lot of the coaches here, you know, mm-hmm. one and done. Or some of them get two if they're lucky, you know. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, that was one of the ones I wanted to touch on too. Was uh, like how do you overcome the adversity? I mean, sometimes things don't work out. I mean, you have. Uh, parents that are upset. You have school board members that are upset, and and so mm-hmm. like a lot of times that ends uh, badly for a lot of coaches. It's a lot of pressure to put it on put on them. That movie Friday Night Lights, you know, like or even I'll remember the Titans. If you don't win, you're, you're fired. Yeah. You know? yeah <laughs> so what, how is, how do you deal with that kind of pressure? Because I, I think a lot of times, like when I've seen teams in the past, you had some really good basketball teams, boys right. and girls here yeah. at Lodgegrass, and one loss. 
just devastates not only the players but yeah. the coach. Yep. You know, there are those moments. You know, we were yeah. we were up eight points one game against Baker, and I, I I kid you not, it was it felt like the end of the world. It felt like the end of a, you know what I mean? Like like from from the attitudes. From listening to the crowd, like you know they're going to catch up. Like, like, like we're up eight. Why are why, why are we? What's this why feeling? Are, yeah. Why are you? Why are we getting on each other? Why yeah. are we pointing fingers? Why? Why are we being upset with each other? And it was coming from all kinds of direction, you know. And so I had to call a timeout. Late last I checked, Lady Indians are up, you know. But if we keep at this and not being t- strong and coming together, we aren't going to. We're not going to win this game. We were talking about it earlier. Draymond Green. Yeah. When the when the Warriors lost, when Steph Curry threw his mouthpiece and it just they fell apart. Fell apart. You know, at best they were the best team that year. Yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah. no doubt they were the best team, but they did fall apart. So you can have yeah. all the talent in the world, but if yeah. you, the toughness, the str- the strength, the coming together, the unity, if you don't have that, yeah, you know, it, you're not. Yeah. You're, it's gonna. It's difficult to overcome. <sighs> yeah. And that's yep. the snowball effect because now. That might be the. What if that's the first game of the season? Yeah. Then it happens again the second game. Yeah. Yeah. And then the third game, and then the fourth, and then now, but, now that image, now yep. that stigma, that that stuff is there, and I think uh, you got to train, teach, um, build, and prepare your players for that. Yep, that's mindset. Uh, it, it's um, knowing we aren't going to win every game. That might be a goal for some people, but just know we may not, and losses are going to come. How are we going to handle those losses? Well, we're going to handle them like warriors. We're going to yeah. be men. Yeah. We're going to we're going to say, you know what? I'm going to dust this off. This loss doesn't define me. Neither does it win. I'm going to right. get up. I'm going to shake it off, and I'm just going to work a little harder. You know, and I think that's the mindset we want to build early, guys. Let's say we we come, and I even asked Gordon, Coach Wilbert, to come talk about this to us, and he said, yeah, guys. He said we were down twelve in um, semifinal with two minutes left. We won by 14. Like, what the heck? You yeah, know, is it yeah. because they just said they turned it and said, all right, coach, we got this. And they took off, stole the ball, layup, stole the ball, layup, stole the ball, three pointer, foul, free throw, made it, stole it. And then it's like, boom, just like that. And he said, guys, you've had this training. And for us, it was um, your hardest day, my warm up. We talked about that. And that's one of the mantras in the game. And um, we lost. To Huntley Project. That was the game that I wanted to talk about. Was like, because like when you guys came in, you guys were, I mean, you guys were playing hard, obviously. I mean, you say you guys weren't playing hard. You guys were playing hard, but it was kind of like they're just going through the motions, right? And they're still doing good. Mm-hmm. But there was a point where you guys are down by eight with like five minutes to go against Huntley. All of a sudden, there was this urgency from all the players where, man, Huntley could barely make it past half court. Like the defense was on point, the rebounds were on point. I mean, the the shots weren't following, and that that ended up some you guys ended up, yeah, you yeah. guys made some mistakes. Whatever yeah. you guys lost, but there was like a different team when you guys were down by eight with like five minutes to go. Like it was hustle, hundred yeah. percent hustle. Exactly you how know, we said it too. The the energy in that last five minutes that you guys had, it seemed like it carried over into the rest of the games and through divisional tournament, and then in, into the state. Yeah. Like you guys had that same sense of urgency, and there was just no beating you guys. You yep. know what I mean? That was something I've never seen before out of Lodgegrass. Like I said, it's a complete right. meltdown when they're down by eight with five minutes to go, and you lose, and it's like, oh man, and then then you lose the next one, and they're out. Yep. There was a few things that played into that, and it's not an excuse. It was just a moment to really build our character and our show our character. You know, not build it, show it. Um, we had that loss. I. Here, here's a couple things. On Wednesday, I got my second shot, March third. Um, we had, I got my shot that day. <laughs> the boys played great. We had a break day. Yeah. So we had that break. We played Wednesday. Had a break Thursday. Yeah, we had a break yeah. Thursday. Yeah. So I was chilling that day, but I had flu symptoms and I was down. The I flu was, game. I was seriously it's the flu game. It, yeah, it wasn't like Michael's that we lost the, co- the COVID we, um, game. So I had the I had the shot and it was it really took me under. Um, I took a drive and and it was just like going down the road. I just uh, I need to get out of here because I was at home, headache down. I'm like, oh my gosh, Coach Lucas, which I trust, who I trust, is gonna have to coach this next game. I can't do it. Like I am down and I took a drive. I gotta get out of my house, so I left my house down here and I hit the road and just took in some sun and just enjoyed it. And then the next day we had that game going great. 
Ty goes down. Yep. Still, he's playing great. He's playing Ty good. Ty got hurt. Ty's a key, a big key to our whole system, and and uh, he's he's big for us. You know, uh, I say the best playmaker in the state because he sees things, and I give him yeah. the freedom and create to be creative and do his thing, and he does it. And you've seen it, like top plays of the of the week. Yeah, best oh. passer in the, in the state. Absolutely. Yeah. So so he goes down. I'm still flu like, and I'm sitting there with a headache, just almost like sometimes. Zoning out like, oh, crap, I got to get in this game. What's going on? Yeah. And so afterwards we lost and I knew, all right, guys, I, I couldn't place blame on anyone. That's just not good leadership. You know, so we took him in. So, all right, hey, I want right now, I want you guys to know this game is on me. This loss was me. My mindset was just not here. I didn't make the right adjustments. Coach Bronger did a great job and they had some great athletes. They executed and, and we just, I, I didn't make the right adjustments, guys. I'm, and that's on me. This game right now is behind us. Right there, we're done. For the next two games, we got to come out and be the Warriors. We we built all season, and we got to show these guys one game at a time. We got five games to go. Let's go one and zero every time. And Raekwon, we got Raekwon on the phone, and he did a Zoom with us. And he said, "Guys, be special. Go one and zero. Just do one and zero." And he's like, "That's it. Just go one and zero. Be special. Show them something they've never seen before. Jump higher than everybody. Run faster. You know." And it was like. He said some amazing things to them, inspired them, and I know they already have that in them, but that those next few games, they just went and went a little higher and a little higher. And they just like – and our practices from the postseason, which they're already tough, but the postseason just got to that ridiculous stage, and, and they all body and we just work yeah. harder. A lot of coaches will – Other coaches will go the other way and rest. They'll sharp, yeah, sharpen they the will. mindset and the system, and we'll do that. We'll, we'll truly do that. But I feel like it's the hardest teams – the teams that's working the hardest – Everyone's grinding. Everyone's grinding, and I know that's a buzzword. Grind, get on the grind. You got to grind. You know, yeah, everybody's yeah. grinding. Yeah. And so, um, it's the hardest working teams that are going to be finishing at the end there, and and then the last four they're going to have the trust factor. The one that finishes at the top, those two teams that get there, they have something that most teams don't, and it's it's the power that drives it. It's it's the it powers the unit, and it's called love. You know, and if you can build that. That love, no one's pointing fingers. Everyone's taking ownership. Everyone's raising up. My bad, guys. That's on me. I'm gonna do better, you know. And and man, when you see it unfold, they all take ownership and and they they say yes to the hard things. Um, I feel like that's that's overcoming adversity. That's creating good habits. That's uh, redefining what hard work is. They'll go anywhere in the state and and do that team's practice and be like, ah, that was all right. Yeah, I I know it. Yeah. For a fact, I've been to a few practices, and I just gauged it, and I said, "Okay, we're going to do that, but we're going to take it higher, mm-hmm. you know." And I don't want to give those secrets out, but we do some stuff, yeah. hard work stuff, yeah, yeah. and and um and I feel like that's what the confidence comes from is that practice, installing that into the mind, into their spirit, and then when the hard when the adversity comes, they say, you know, it's it's uh how do you handle this? It, it's it's not let's like people will say, um. When, when a challenge comes, when life comes, smacks you right in the face, you rise to the, what do they say? Rise to the occasion, occasion, right? Yeah. So they always say that that's Michael Jordan. That's Tom Brady. Yeah. You know, that's Kobe and LeBron yeah. and Steph. Like that's those guys. I mean, that's a, an exceptional list of people, right? We don't rise to the occasion guys. We rise to the level of our training and that's on me. Yeah. So I make sure. No, we're going to go hard. If you don't want in, go ahead, go play JV. You can, you can resign. We'll bring somebody up, but we're going to go hard yeah. and we're going to do this thing. And they, they buy in, they yeah. do it. So guys, when adversity comes, when life comes and smacks you, when a team comes and hits you hard, yeah. what do you do? You rise to the level of your training. Mm-hmm. How are you being trained? You're doing this mindset, home class gym. And then they just rise and rise and rise and rise. And then they yeah. just do what they did. Well, that's it guys. You made it to the end. Thank you for tuning in to the Crow Strong Podcast. I am your host, Brian Singer. Look out for new episodes as I interview a new guest every weekend. At the end of the day, it is my goal to ultimately bring value to you, the listener. Again, thank you for listening to the Crow Strong Podcast.